so John uh, has set up this, this learning objectives, uh, which are very uh, reassuming everything in the, in the chapter. Um, we, we are um, going to see some, some contents uh, within the plots and adding labels, notations, and then we, we see how to use these scale functions and then uh, see what, what we want to display and what not. And then we are going to customize some, some plots with using themes and then saving the plot. So this is, um, um, I don't know uh, if you are uh, a bit of uh, um, like reached some, some practice doing these plots, hopefully. And today we see some examples using um, data sets from the data set package uh, and make some simple plots, but with interesting extra features. So the um, first thing, very important, is a suggestion of this uh, truthful art by Albert Cairo. Uh, which is a very, very interesting book and gives you uh, good insights about um, infographics and uh, data visualizations and everything. So focuses on what you need to think about in order to create effective graphics. And then here, uh, here is the, the link of the, this book. Uh, and then uh, looking through the suggestions and uh, about resources, I found two interesting uh, resources. One is, uh, I'll put all of them in the chat just for you to, to have a look at them. Um, and um, Maybe this is not the, the best way to put it in the chat, but okay. Uh, and I I like to to show you this one first, which is uh, I'm not sharing. Um, then you might be able to see it now. Can can you see my Chrome? Yes, it is. Which attempting that to file. load a page, <laughs> which is not opened up. So it's a Dropbox with things, uh, and I, I should have it already open it. So mm -hmm. uh, there are some resources which are very nice. One is this Data Science Plus. Oh, I think you froze up. No. <laughs> okay, I'm oh, back. There you are. Yes. I'm back. <laughs> okay. Good. Okay, let's let's go back where we were. So this is a Dropbox, uh, uh, which uh, uh, it takes a while to open it, and then the the other uh, links I like to show you is this one here, which is the ggplot2 extensions gallery, and here you can find. Um, these are the packages uh, which are supporting ggplot2 and then uh, you can uh, like have a, a real uh, journey uh, inside them all because they they are all very interesting and they provide lots of features that you can add to your basic plot so you may have uh, need some time to see them but you know they, they are all very good. Then going back to where we were. So basically what we are going to do uh, today is uh, uh, looking at some uh, uh, data sets and added some feature making a plot. So the first data set I'd like to show you is this biochemical oxygen demand found in data set package. 
And this is made of just two variables, time and demand. As you can see here, it's six observations with time and demand. So um, I made a simple plot with geom points and geom smooth to obtain something like that. This is made, as you can see, one observation, time one and demand 8.3 example. So time one and demand 8.3 and then the second point, the third point and then. When you do the geom smooth, and C uh, false, uh, which is the um, the error, the standard error that you can uh, put on false, so you don't have the ribbon, the band um, here. So it, it looks nice, very nice. And then uh, what the chapter uh, tells you is to, you can add some information to your plot, like with labs function, and you can add the title, a subtitle, a caption, and then name the, the axis, the, the rename. For example, this was um, in low, um, not capital letters, so I've start, I put this uh, um, this way. And then I've already uh, add something which we will see at the end of this chapter, which is the theme. And with this uh, package, TV teams, you can add uh, different teams that there's many. So for example, with this avatar, uh, automatically sets the ground color, the, uh, the panel grids as they are. And, uh, uh, you know, there's a team sometimes set the, the, the size of the, text and everything. So this is the first plot uh, and the first annotation uh, is add with labs function. Federica, quick yeah. question. That's beautiful, by the way. I love how it's done all of the little captions and everything. Um, when you plot the SE, so standard error, what type of error is that? That's the, 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 the standard error uh, we, we see um here the the um, is not the um the standard deviation but it is the standard error so the difference between the the line uh the the model line this is the model line no if uh -huh. i change this to true yeah Um, and take off the theme, maybe. Uh, okay, we cannot see. Huh. Anyway, um, so basically, what do what you it does is uh, calculating the distances between the model line, which is the smooth, and the uh and the error so and the real observation in this case uh, now now i understand the reason in this case there is no difference between the observation that's and what the i was line. <laughs> okay okay so that's not needed so in this case because i've changed the the data set uh from those one proposed in the book so in this case, ah, the C, okay. SE, uh, standard error force is not needed uh, for this reason, because we don't have many observations, but just one, but yes, just one yes. observation. So okay, the, I guess my question was also, and sorry, this is kind of a dumb question, but you're not plotting a model, right? Are you? Oh, the geom, the geom smooth will do it. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, okay. Yeah, Got yeah, that, that, that's not exactly um, what we think about uh, when we think about model, uh, but it, it is a model. Uh, it, Got it. It, yeah. it's mostly used in non-parametric analysis. Mm -hmm. So you are not setting everything, but it automatically set, set the, like a linear model or, a slightly non-linear model with the lowest, but you can you you can uh, set it more precisely, adding even parameters. But 
you know, uh, usually is used for you to have a look uh, at, at your data, have a quick look, uh, mm -hmm. making an exploratory analysis. It's very useful. There's many options that you can add. The second data set is found uh, in the book. So and made of some random uniform distributions. And here we see how to, how, um, to customize the axis title, uh, um, adding maths formula. For example, this is made of random uniform of 10 um, of the values, 10 observations as, um, do you prefer if I stay here on R or go back to the presentation? Whichever is easiest for you, honestly. I, I like to look at it both ways. Okay, so we say a minute here because I like to show you something so we can uh, see what changes if you, we do some uh, different customization. Uh, here we have this, this table, which is uh, made like this. We have cities and... Uh, um, Okay, so we have X and Y made of random uniform form and 10 observations. We plot this value um, with points. And we, in, in this case, I've set a shape of 21, which means that it, it's uh, just a circle. So if I do this, for example, then you can see that the 21 is just a, a type of point, which is a circle, open circle. If then I add the stroke, uh, basically um, uh, the, the circle is more thick, and then if I do the size five, so the, the, the points, the circle point is bigger. Uh, then I've add some uh, transparencies with, with alpha and set the fill. So the inside like grayish somehow like this. So you can customize even points. There are different shapes that you can use. And then uh, this is a nice option because this is the the uh, the circle which get thicker if you set it to an upper value. Then, as well as before, we use the lab for um, the uh, axis titles. But now we add a formula. So we 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 like to see a math formula. And so we can use uh, uh, the quote function for adding the formula. Uh, for example, the, in the x-axis, we have the summation of a, um, x uh, sub i squared, and it's made like this with i from one to n, and then the alpha and beta, like that. This time we use the Brooklyn 99 team, which is looks very nice, nice blue and everything. So if you have any questions, ask. That looks really yeah. cool. Fredo, can you scroll? So here it knows, you know, when you say like y equals quote alpha to put in the symbol for that, right? So that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the 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 quote function. Uh-huh. The quote function um basically quote an expression. So you uh, anything you um, put inside is considered as a math expression. So if you put something else, it doesn't uh, doesn't work properly. For example, you need if you want to, you can you can even write things uh, uh, using other function like if you use past. Uh -huh. uh, but quote is used for for formulations for formulas. Okay. 
Okay, then we have the third data set, which is the uh, annual precipitation in US cities. And this time the set is made of one observation each column. Uh, and they are about the average amount of precipitation or rainfall in inches for each of the 70 United States and Puerto Rico cities. As you can see here, I have just uh, uh, selected the first three observations. So if I do more, like 10, we can see. So it's made of just one row and uh, 70 columns. In fact, if I do uh, dim, it doesn't work. Um, while if I do length, it tells me the length of the row because it's a vector. So I needed to make a bit of uh, like um, adjustments and say, for example, what are the names? And I have all my cities, all the 70 cities, US cities, and then I assign them to and uh, I give them a name. So I assign this vector to a name cities. And then I've made a data frame of cities and precipitation. So this way we finally have a, a data, data frame and that can be used inside the ggplot. So I've arranged the, the data frame to be um, from the lowest precipitation value to the highest and then made a ggplot. So this plot uh, here cannot be seen properly. So I need to go back here. So I don't know why the black went away. So as you can see, I've plot the name of the cities, uh, sizes by uh, the precipitation level. And this is a, a, a second important feature that we can use. So add uh, text to our plot, which is linked. So it's, a part, it's the text of the plot that we want to, uh, to see in the plot. So this time we have this, uh, we can plot the name of the cities along the, the precipitation values. And here I made a, a little modification of the dots uh, and the main line. Uh, and then I've add the text. So to add the text, you use the geom text function, which is a very interesting function. Uh, there is even um, another package, which is geom text repel, which is uh, supporting this, this function um, with extra features. So geom text uh, basically um, use the text that you have in your data set, data frame and plot it inside your plot. Then you can specify the, pos the position, uh, the, uh, the adjustment of the text uh, on the X axis or the Y axis. And then if you have more, so like, the plot is crowded of text. You can use this check overlap and put it on uh, true, just as the same I did it here. So there were more um, city names, but then I've just uh, uh, selected um, a few, uh, the most uh, important ones. So let's go back uh, to, to the presentation. Wait, yeah. quick question, Federica. So how does it just automatically, um, you know, label the ones with the, like, how do you select those? Is it with the nudge or the repel? 
like the uh, labor for the city. Okay, he does uh, he does automatically based okay. on the um, position that appears in the plot and on the mm -hmm. values. So, for example, mm -hmm. if I go back here. If I go back uh, here and uh, uh, I put check overlap to false, mm -hmm. I can see that yeah, they are okay. uh, big crowded. Even if I do the zoom, they uh, and it's set. To, so they are because the their values are very tight to each other. So yeah. there, there may be the possibility to do some extra adjustments with um, um, setting um, the, the distance between points, like the unit, uh, the standard unit uh, slightly different. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, somehow you can say that you are selecting uh, some important uh, um, let's see if I can take this off. Uh, you, you, you are selecting some, some CDs uh, among the most important ones. I see, yeah. So it's sort of doing it automatically for you, right? Yes, in this, okay. in this case, uh, it does automatically. But you can yeah. uh, do it uh, uh, selection with data wrangling. So you yeah. can add here, uh, um, uh, like uh, um, a subset of the data frame with mm -hmm. just the seed that you want to, to be appearing in the plot. And yeah. then you can. Uh, you can plot the, the city that you want. You know, Otherwise, in this case, yeah. I, I was just wondering because, um, for example, at least for people that live in the US, Miami is a good reference. And so it overlaps San Juan, sort of, and that's why Miami is not included here. But I think that, you know, for showing data precipitation in US cities, Miami would be a city to include type of yeah. a map. Yeah. Um, so then I guess you could just do, like you said, just wrangle the data, have it included, and then somehow yeah. make it non, non overlapping with San Juan. Yeah, because if, okay. you, if you add uh, like this, you do data and then equal DF, this is your um, data frame, okay? And then mm -hmm. you might want to subset the data frame to like see this. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you can say in, and then you set like, I don't know. Got it, yeah. Sacramento, like a couple of them. Mm -hmm. And Paris, <laughs> and Miami. Um, San Juan. Uh, or San Juan. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I want to see what it does with the Miami and San Juan. Maybe it'll I just. Uh, okay. Any, um, we should see them uh, um, arrange it somehow. Thank you for doing this. I like it. Oh, okay, let, let's go down to see San Juan is there. There is no any accents or everything because sometimes you see this accent and uh, Miami where is it okay Miami okay so for example San Juan may cause of a problem uh, okay I need to put them like this yeah 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 okay so uh, now I have subsetted my uh, DF to have just this, uh, but then as you can see, the values of the precipitation are still mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So then you might need to say mapping because sometimes, sometimes required 
to add this uh, mapping specification. And hmm. let's see. Uh, hmm. Let's see what the, uh, I've done. Maybe label is data, not cities, or no? Cities is label and then size. Oh, never mind. Yeah. yeah. And everything. So. Subset. I. And then. Um, oh. Okay, I do these things and then, uh, you know, I take this. Lucy was saying in the ggplot, so maybe it's the xy? Maybe the xy, I don't know. Okay. I don't see what. Federica, if you want to move on from this, um, feel free. Uh, I yeah. was just asking questions and uh, you're very graceful in answering very detailedly. And, <laughs> and I would point out that um, there is a whole other uh, book on ggplot to dive deep into um, okay. everything about it. So <laughs> we only need a we only need an overview today. We're not going to get through okay. every possible thing okay. in ggplot. Okay, okay. <laughs> I don't know. It just uh, I don't know why why it doesn't work. Yeah. But anyway. Okay. So thank you. Uh, okay. The, uh, yes, that there, there is a ggplot uh, book uh, which which will be very very useful as well. So the other uh, data set is um, uh, let's go back here. Okay, so the other data set is this, uh, uh, it's Iris data set, the Edgar uh, Anderson Iris data set, and it gives you measurements in centimeters of the variables, sepal length and width, and pedal length and width, and then respectively for 50 followers from each of the three species of Iris. So the species are Setosa, Versicol, uh, Virginica, and here, what um, we did it is again, um, uh, as you can see, a modification uh, of the data. And I did it to just to have these three values appearing and not all of them. Uh, because if I don't do this, um, uh, as you can see, I put data, iris, and everything. And then the label is exactly the same as before. I, I don't see the difference. But anyway, uh, this is the, uh, so I did a subset to, uh, to have just these values and to be able to, to see just one. Because otherwise, if I do just CG text, uh, and then the label species, it's very uh, crowded, okay? So what I wanted is just to have uh, three values for each group. And to do that, I set that to max value and then adjusted a bit to the right. So this is uh, uh, one more thing that you can use is the adjustment of the text. And then we can see that there is a, uh, a little bit for the, uh, for the specification of the different options that you can use. So that, that's nice. Uh, and so you can customize as you like to have the text. 
then you can find a lot of information about those things uh, on the internet. There's a. Uh, um, so, Derek, yeah. allow me to ask you a question. Yeah. Um, please go back to the plots. Yeah. So, what you're seeing, for example, Setosa, I, if I look at uh, the geom text, the filter, we have picked the maximum uh, sepal length. Mm hmm. So it uh, what, um, um, is it like pointing to the value that has the maximum one, or it's just putting text? Okay, this is put, it, it, uh, pointing to the the several length value, and I've set that just equal to the to its max. So the iris data set is this. Okay, so the several length is this value. As I've did this plot, mm -hmm. which is this, and I have the seven length here and the seven yeah. as you can see, they group it quite nicely. So I just this to a bit mix it. So if I use the the jump text as it is, I may mm, be able to make some adjustments like uh, okay, okay, okay. okay. Uh, even if I use check um, overlap to, on uh, set to true, as you can see, yeah. they, they, they repeat themselves because they just the main group. Mm -hmm. So if you subset the iris data set and group it to species, mm -hmm. And then filter the thing to separate length equal to its max, and then ungroup it. You have this thing. Okay, so you have just three values. Mm -hmm. And you want these three values to be on, on, on the plot. So this is the theme uh, modern from, from this other package, which is provided these colors and the background. But then you can see that you have just the three values. Yeah. Okay. I get it. Thank you so much. Very nice. So you could also set it to the minimum, right? It doesn't have to be the maximum yeah. as long as yeah. to give one value yeah. guide. Yeah. Okay. If I do the minimum, they they strip away because oh yeah. Okay. That makes sense. You can do even the 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 max is the best one. You cannot do the mean because the mean you might not be able to have that the value of the mean within the data. Okay, so you need to find uh, uh, select some values that you've got in the data. Just subset yeah. your data. That makes okay. sense. Then uh, uh, the fifth data set is the uh, well known fuel economy data. Uh, so the MPG data set. This one here with the cards and the model displacement here and everything. So here we learn how to set the label in a specific place inside the plot. So I have this data set, okay? But then I want to add something uh, like a sentence. Increasing engine size is, and then go on the other line, tab related to decreasing fuel economy. I want to, I like, I like to add this sentence to my plot. One way to do this, this the thing is to uh, add directly inside the data. So for example, these are my data and then I summarize displacement, um, the hinging, max and add the label so this will be my label which is this so basically i have add a sentence and position it to a certain level of displacement and the hy so this way okay are you with me <laughs> Okay, so yes, yes. Then, then I add this label inside the geom text. 
there it is. Okay, so here I have my ggplot made my, my, my data, original, original data, and then made some points, and there it is. Then, this is it. No? Then I, I, I like to add that, that sentence. So I use geom text and set the label, because that's a requirement, to label, which is my sentence. Okay. If I do that, you see, you have your sentence on top, oh. top right, because I've specified where I like to have that top right. I guess I have a, a question. So this is just a, a neater way of being able to specify something. Because couldn't you put that whole subsetting for the label into the geom text? Whole? What do you mean? So, for example, can you scroll up a little bit? Yeah. A um, little bit more. Okay. So when you have, you know, in your ggplot call, then you have geom text aesthetic label equals label. Could you say label equals and then say MPG, um, what is that called? Uh, and then summarize displacement highway label within the geom text? Uh, yeah, if you, if you like to, to, to have some, some values in the, in, the, in, in the sentence and say, for example, you can do that saying past. I don't know if I understood what the, the thing that you say. But okay. I can I can say this like increasing engine size uh, to I don't know and then you add the value of the uh, what is max displacement and then. Which is really, I don't know if it works like that. You're not sure. But, and then. Size to, to seven. Okay. Oh, yeah. And then you have this. Okay. I guess my question was simpler than that, Federica. So if you were to highlight, you know, <laughs> no, from label, so line 125, the MPG, and then summarize this whole statement, could you just paste this into label equals and replace the second label with this whole statement up there from the MPG? Um, I'm not sure about that. Okay. Okay, so um, you can do it. Maybe I'm. I'm going to switch on off on the li the light because uh, it's very dark here. Give me a second. So sunlight. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I forget down. that we're in very know, different right? parts yeah. of the world. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, uh, so we did that. Uh, you can do this many different ways, like using annotation function. So you, you have uh, many other options. Okay, in particular, we, we see uh this picture here which tells you where you can position uh your text inside the plot so if you use um horizontal adjust to left and then vertical adjust to top it will be here and then so on and so forth like center, center, right, center. And I've used this here to have this on top right. Okay. So let's go back to uh, where we were. 
you can see a little bit better. So this is, uh, the, there are um, other uh, geom um, to use for um, annotation in your plot. These are uh, horizontal line, vertical line, uh, geom rect, and geom segment. So these are uh, considered annotation. So you can add the lines and everything. Then finally, we have uh, the scales functions. So here the, the data set is um, a random norm uh, of 10,000. And then uh, the geom used is geom x, hexagon. As you can see that, that that's very nice. So um, here you use uh, the scale field viridis from the viridis package. Uh, so when you basically set a color, you then you can use the scale for changing the uh, default color to uh, favorite one. So this case, uh, I've used a package, but there are many other options. If you do like scale, uh, fill, and then tab, uh, the list of the available option appears. Then I've used the patchwork package for um, doing two plots uh, together, and then add these things, the theme, and the, the legend position. So finally, we reach the team uh, section, uh, and as well as ggplot to provide some uh, teams available, which are this one here, the black and white, the light, line draw, classic, and everything. You have other packages uh, supporting ggplot as a ggplot extensions. So for, as you have seen in the plot I've shown before, you have many different uh, um, other team available for you to use. And then finally, you can save your plot using ggsave function or the other packages like the raj, which I use quite frequently, the raj package, which uses um, a PDF, uh, um, so the uh, PNG function for you to, to save the plot. What's the name of the second package for saving? Diraj, uh, show you. Diraj, okay. Show you. Diraj. So, for example, if I um, have made this, this plot, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, if I use gg save, I don't need to, to name anything, just I do like this is my last plot, mm -hmm. uh, and then I do gg save and say, uh, for example, my plot, my png, and I save it. Automatically save it in my directory, mm -hmm. which is not there. And there it is because mm -hmm. I am inside. So our markdown set, uh, save and set all the things inside the main folder, the folder mm -hmm. where I save it, the, the, the file. Oh, and this is the place. This is not okay. So this is the block. Right. Okay. The other one, the other one is uh, the Raj package. If you, you because I've already installed and loaded. Mm -hmm. Then you have this add PNG function where you specify 
the, the file name, and then maybe you want to say like final dot, and then you have the final, then you save that as final. Okay, and then I might want to save it where is it? Yeah, it's better if I say my block too. Okay, so as you can see, this is the is slightly different as um, uh, from from GG save. Uh, it's important for you to specify some options. Uh, like I don't know if you want to to set, for example, the width. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, or the scaling um, of all the things, mm -hmm. but uh, some somehow you can uh, you should be able to do that. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so ah, dev off. That's why because I needed to. to uh, th this is the device off at the end of the things because otherwise this is the way to use the raj. Okay. Mm. Okay, and then dev off. Okay, uh, let's let's let, let's leave it like, like that. Um, I don't know what it's think of. It's, so you can yeah. It's possible that uh, rag doesn't play well with RMDs because normally, like it's you know it's a bad idea to save the image out of the RMD. I think it might be fighting against the RMD's um, rendering uh, rules. So try it and just like, yeah. Mm, to be I'm not honest, sure, uh, but. Uh, usually works, uh, probably mm, always. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. See, I think it was just because it was rendered within the. Um, mm. Mm. Maybe well, somewhere, somewhere else, maybe somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, because. Um, Anyway, um, yeah, be, be sure to comment out all the saves in the uh, RMD before you uh, check it in because those, <laughs> will, I mean, it'll work, but then it'll throw errors and cause weirdness. So, <laughs> why is it a bad idea to save images from an RMD? So, it's not um, using something like RAG where it's opening up a device and, um, you know, it, it's doing a weird type of saving mm -hmm. rmd is also doing that like it's rendering it inside of the rmd and so they're fighting with each other over the oh. rendering and i'm pretty sure that's what's happening there and i'm sure that there are how to's of using rag within an rmd but it's a i'm pretty sure that's what's happening is um they're fighting because you know if you go back to the rmd it's also putting like when you call it it's putting the image in the RMD itself. And so mm. both of oh. those things are trying to happen. I um, see. Okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, you're oh, muted, Federica. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was so like, I <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, right. and, 
but anyway Let, let's go back to uh 21 i'm sure because i used <laughs> always that all super mario cool yeah there you there you go yeah but Happy see day. yeah you're in a script not in the uh not in an rmv yeah. so you're not fighting mm, um interesting yeah and then uh, uh so that there's some option that you can add to, mm -hmm. to see so but anyway uh then i've started using gg save because Previously, GGSAVE wasn't working properly with, maybe with my machine, but then I think it improved a bit, or maybe I have improved a bit using the options, <laughs> extra options. I'm trying to remember, like I remember, you know, RAG is, if I'm not mistaken, that's also by Thomas, uh, Thomas Lynn Peterson, who is the lead developer on ggplot2 now. So yeah. Um, I think a lot of that functionality has been wrapped into ggplot2 as of um, the last major version. Um, but yeah, he's constantly making improvements because saving plots is still surprisingly tricky mm -hmm. to get you know the resolution you want and everything. It takes yeah. some um, yeah. yeah. It takes either a lot of experimentation or doing it enough that you get to the point that you know how to do it and honestly i don't save enough plots to be good at it so um but i always have to fiddle around a little bit whenever i want to actually save a plot but in a way that matters the reason that i'm not good at it is most of the time i'm just like getting something that is good enough to talk to someone else knowledgeable about and i think my most common way of saving a plot is in the viewer just opening it up and uh ex you know copying it to clipboard basically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because after yeah. I've done some experimentation and I see what I want to see, you know, it, it makes sense to me. I just copy it out and paste it over to Slack to whoever I'm trying to explain it to. Um, so I don't do a lot with saving, but I used to, and it was a pain. <laughs> and so yeah. I'm kind of glad to not have to anymore. Um, ah, there you go. Oh. Um, sorry if I interrupt you. Uh, this is no, the, no, no. The... Go for it. Mm -hmm. the, the things I wanted to show you uh, at the beginning that uh, it, it took a while for, mm -hmm. for loading from the doc, Dropbox uh, mm -hmm. things. Uh, this is the list. Uh, you, you find many resources here. Um, I don't know. Uh, really, there's everything. Um, I don't know. The, the, I, I used to, uh, when I make a plot, to, to look at the uh, graph gallery, but then, the, you know, the, there's many others, um, information, uh, other resources that you can uh, look through. And this I've put in the chat. Then uh, the, the, I think it's almost everything uh, for, for the chapter. Besides that, after saving, the plot, there's a few more information about the, the sizing uh, in R Markdown. Mm -hmm. So you make a plot and then you want to uh, centering or um, so setting different uh, weight or um, here is nice. For example, this is the uh, overall aspect of the of the plot, so you set it on mm, mm -hmm. sixty percent, and then um, it changes completely. Uh, you are not changing the size of the the dots, but you see, you're changing the the aspect of the plot. As you can see, you are not, I'm, I'm not making modification of the plot inside the plot, changing the size of the dots. Okay. I'm just changing the options in my uh, R Markdown chunk. And this changes the thing. And then, um, I don't know, other, other things that you can set, uh, there's other options. And here uh, you have more resources. All right. Can, oh, yeah. Go cool. ahead. Just uh, we're running out of time. 
Yeah. Um, um, this has been fun to see, um, you know, lots of different things. I, uh, I think, you know, uh, I will be doing that talk walkthrough of all the different clubs that I talked about and DG plot two is definitely on that list. Um, there's a whole separate book. Um, actually they're working on the third edition of that book right now. Um, and that's what the club is reading. So there's mm -hmm. a lot, uh, GG plot is a huge universe of packages. So many packages exist. Um, I actually, for work, I made, <laughs> uh, I had a boss a while back who, anytime I showed him a plot, all he would obsess about was the style. Like he wouldn't pay attention to the day, you know, what I'm trying to show him. And so I spent, I don't know, a few weeks, like creating a package that wrapped all of our official work style guides into the package. And so whenever he would make a style comment, I'd say, go talk to the art people. These are the rules they've set. Now let's talk about the plot, please. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, which maybe not with that motivation, but the, uh, the idea of setting up a style package is really useful. Um, and I still use that package because it is like, it uses all of our colors and our whatever, our various guidelines. So um, yeah, so the, anyway, it's a huge universe. Um, if you do a lot of plotting or even not necessarily a lot, but if you do plotting, the, mm -hmm. the book is very useful. I haven't actually read that one yet, but it's on my list. Um, Do you know if a book club for that is starting soon for the GG plot? None are actively um, starting, but I'm um, getting closer and closer to making it easier for new clubs to start. Mm -hmm. And at that point, um, I was just actually uh, listening to a podcast earlier today that um, kind of mentioned in passing that there's been research that shows that you want about you want four people in a group for conversations like if you do breakout rooms for um, mm -hmm. uh, zoom they should have four people in them not and apparently not even about four people they should have four people that's your best conversation size that you're going to get interactions between people so i was like oh that's that's interesting to know i do notice that that if you've got i mean i'll say four or five um even six somewhere in that range that's the book mm -hmm. clubs that are the best um mm -hmm. everyone talks to each other you don't have, you know, it's easier to not be shy, I think. So um, anyway, so I don't think it's that hard to get three or four people. Um, so right. if you're, if you're interested sense. in a book, um, I want to make it easy to just, you know, that you can say, okay, I want to read this book. I'll, I'll facilitate it. And then it'll, you know, we'll set up polls and everything. So that's coming until then. Um, if you're interested, just post in, uh, either the channel or in the request channel. So either the channel for the club or the request channel and eventually I'll get it up. Um, that's coming, it's streamlining right now, uh, very actively. I was doing some work on that during this call, so. Um. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so what do we have next? Um, Load this I think up. it was me, but I cannot make it. So okay, right, and we finished mostly. I mean, we could go over some more GG plots two stuff, or we can have a break uh, next week um, before the uh, the last chapter and the wrap up. Um, I guess another option would be I could do the. Um, description of all the books, but I don't know. I'd rather do that when everyone is, is available. Yeah, please don't leave me. <laughs> yeah. <out>. <laughs> so, so I think um, you know, if it's okay with everyone, we'll just do a break next week, um, and then we'll we have just two weeks left, and that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> we made it through. Well, I mean, I made it I through. Right? I have now read the whole <laughs> book, um, which I had not read it all before this club. So. It's very exciting. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sorry about next week. It's not that I can't yeah. make the time. I should probably be clarify. I have a big deadline on Friday and there's no way that I'm, yeah, that I can prepare the chapter. So I no, apologize for that. No problem whatsoever. Um, well, wait. So if you can make the time, I could do the, the all the other clubs thing. Oh, next week. yeah. If you prefer that. 
Yeah, I, might as well. So, okay. um, I have like I I gave a version of this um for uh, a talk yesterday, so I have officially prepared that talk now. Um, and we'll just go go over like all the books that I know of that we have mm -hmm. in book clubs and kind of a like the general process of finding the next thing to read. Um, there are so many things, you know, like I think you can see, yeah. Um, I have all these books that I kind of collect the books and for a long time, I didn't actually read the books. Um, I would just kind of collect them and read a couple of pages and then actually read the online version a little bit here and there. It has been so useful to actually go through the whole books, even on topics that I think that I know pretty well. There's some sentence where it's like, and you know, of course you can also do blah, blah, blah. I'm like, wait, what? Um, so uh, highly recommend more books, more book clubs. Um, yeah. And we'll talk yeah. about those next week then. Okay. Well, that sounds good. Thank you for being flexible. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Federica. Thank that you. was really fun. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>